Alright, so this will be a very short tutorial. I know that some of you were asking about um, a second part of my tutorial, like um, that was the 3D print, like, uh, like Grasshopper for 3D printing. This is one because uh, uh, in the comments that you left on the, in the um, you left on the on the on the previous video about how can we do, for example, like non-planar uh, path tool path generation. For example, if you're using a robot or or you want to explore those possibilities, so I will show you like a very simple uh, workflow on how to generate the path. I will leave the G-code generation for a, for another video. I will keep this uh, really short. Um, <clears throat> so. For this, we will use because I mean, there's no point of if if it's already there. We will use Pufferfish. Pufferfish is a very nice uh, plugin. Let me go to Food for Rhino. I will leave the link in the dis in the description just in case. Uh, let me get this here. Food for Rhino. You know, plugins. Pufferfish is probably one of the most popular plugins for for Grasshopper you find it here uh, so pufferfish has like a lot of tools to work with with meshes do like operations like mirroring and merging meshes and it's a very 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 nice tool I liked it a lot I don't use it at, uh, as often um, it was uh, developed by uh, Mike Pryor I think he was a designer at Nike or still a designer at Nike uh, so you download this it's a very simple installation. You just download the the zip file. You just open it, and you just need to. I mean, it has the the instructions to install it here. So I won't go uh, on details about about that. Uh, so basically, like there are several ways to do this. If you have, for example, the advanced 3D printing f uh, book from Giancarlo De Marco. It has one exercise about the non-planar using um, isocurves or isocurves. Uh, this one has a different approach. So I will start by doing something like very very simple. Let's just uh, create a a cube like ten by ten. Actually, I should yeah, like ten by ten by ten. I, I don't care about the units uh, right now, so let's not worry about that. I will work here in this view so yeah so we can have that we can have grasshopper on, on in here so I will follow this I will explain it step by step and I will leave the file also in the in the description so let's say we have this uh, this cube here right and we want to for example print it with with like a, a another technique like uh, sorry with with a different like non planar path the good thing about this is that you can apply it to any VREP or we can have also the mesh version. Uh, so what I like to do, and probably some of you will say like, nah, that's not the way that you do it. Well, this is my way of doing it. So um, I will create a planar surface here. <coughs> I will just rebuild it to give more resolution. And I will copy this in the top part and again this is a little bit weird and probably it won't get you the the results that you're looking for but it's uh, I hope this gives you like some clue about it so I will do here a cage edit just to modify our um, our surface to generate some modifications Oh, sorry, chick chick. I will do a rectangle, and I am just adding a cage edit modifier, so I can just play a little bit. So let's say this will control the shape of my of my curve generation, right? So let's say I have something like this. Maybe I need to exaggerate this a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I think this this is good enough. Maybe this a little bit that way. So <coughs> I'm showing this with a cube. I will show you another example. So let's say we have two surfaces. 
usually the way that, for example, that the Giancarlo Di Marco book, the advanced Reading printing for in with Grasshopper, shows you using isocurs. But in this case, um, explode join. So in this case, this is a surface, and no matter what. So if I want to extract an ice, extract an isocurve, because the way that the surface, or like any surface that you model, that's what I'm trying to say. If you if you want to do this with any shape, it won't work. Uh, but this is like a more generalist approach. So in this case, oh, I need to move both. So yeah, in this case, I will use, for example, this surface and this surface as the drivers for the path generation. So what we will do, something like this, I will replicate everything here. So this is basically the 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 the, the curve generator, right? So we start with the surface, just a surface instance container from Grasshopper. We will do both. So this will be button surface uh, SRF, and this will be top SRF. So we will select one surface, the surface here, and set one surface, the surface here. How do you generate the surface is super important. So in the meantime, I will hide this. It's super important because well, you, will, you will understand why. So now we will use basically what we want to do. We want to interpolate, right? We want to interpolate. Uh, do what is called the tween uh, surface. So we have tween curve, we have uh, tweening between two surfaces that this is in puffer fish. So we will use this tool. So actually I like to show everything like this. I don't use icons because I think they don't make any sense. If you want to know where a node is just control alt and left click on top of the node and it will tell you what it is you see so in this case we will use this you can you can use meshes as well but here we will tween through surfaces uh... is that the one that we're using? Uh, yeah no, we tween th uh, through surfaces not two surfaces you have like a lot of uh... <coughs> options here so what we will do we will uh... input our first surface then with left shift the second surface so you see that immediately it creates one uh, one surface that is like the let's say the interpolation between those two this will interpolate those so probably you already figure out what we're trying to to do here we're trying to basically interpolate a lot and generate through this the, the curves for non-planar um, Printing. This is actually a nice technique because if you control the way that this this top surface is, you can control actually the shape. You can design the the, the, the paths. So <clears throat> in this case, this works with a factor, with a normalized factor. It says like from zero, this is surface at the start, surface at the end. So we will try this. So if I add this factor, you see like one is at the top, and then as you go down with the number, you approach to zero you get closer to that uh, surface over there so you have a perfect transition but what we want to do is to control this so we want to do this so we will start actually we will create these numbers here we we I won't go into into this uh, parameters here because it's not necessary for now so we will create a domain 0.0, .0 to 1.0 this is our domain and we will create a range of number numbers sorry specifying this domain and how many layers do we want basically these are these are the steps so we will create for example something up to I don't know 200 you can actually punish your, your computer if you add like a, a lot of numbers so for now we will start with 10 we will call this uh, layer number you can measure this I want uh, I won't go into details that how, for example, how can you measure exactly like the layer height that I will leave that up to you. This is a general just approach. So if I input this, because this is giving me a range of numbers between 0 and 1, basically like 10 numbers between 0 and 1, 
this creates those numbers that will drive the generation. So you see here we are actually creating those um, those shapes. This looks nice. So let's say we want to do 50. That's nice as well. So let's for now keep it low to 10. <coughs> and with this what we want to do now, we want to do a uh, Birep Birep intersection. We want to intersect our main shape with the surfaces. So we want to do Birep Birep No, it doesn't show. So we go to intersect. Uh, this is a mathematical... Oh no, this is a physical intersection actually. So it's a, we select the Birep Birep intersection. Again, you find it here. Intersect physical and birep 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 to birep intersect intersections. So um, we need to generate a uh, container node with the birep that we want to intersect. So this is like our this is 3D print double shape. Right click set one birep. We select this. We can hide it now. Um, and the intersector basically right are all of these shapes so if we preview this off you can see that now we're getting the curves right we can work with these things I mean uh, you need to do some fine-tuning so probably yeah this like trigger printing this you need to do some fi some fine-tuning so this is why uh, to me, the, this approach is like important because it requires a little bit of design, a little bit of like involvement, and, and also not you, you design your shape that you want to 3D print, but at the same time, it it is a design the way that this will be printed and the way that this uh, toolpath will be generated. So I like this approach that then you can, for example, modify with the cage edit this uh, surface. I will do it in, in in a bit. Actually, I can do it now. So let me hide this guy. Uh, this is the control so if I press F10 I get access to the the point so let's say I want to modify this a little bit so you see you have the possibility of designing and playing with the things that you want to uh, 3d print so maybe I want to do that maybe a little bit lower yeah so you say oh, maybe I want to do this because it will look good for example like 3d printing a shape this way so anyway, I will leave that up to you. I will hide this. <coughs> you can of course parameterize this surface. That will be also like a nice thing, like creating the surface from scratch in Grasshopper so you have a full system that will do this. So in this case we have the shape. So now we need to create the now that we have the curves, so this is as I have the file here, I will group this like layer layer generator and we're done with pufferfish uh, again if you have shapes the good thing is that you have the way of uh, generating the 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 shapes sorry sorry if you have the meshes if you're working with meshes you can have also the twinning between meshes that's totally fine so now let's create this so the first thing that we want to do we want to divide our curves we have all the curves here, so let me hide this as well. Uh, we have all the curves, so we want to divide the curves, get those curves, and give those curves, for example, a good amount of points. 360 is fine, so we're generating 360 points per, um, let's say, per layer, per curve. So here starts something that it's it's really cool. So now the way that our data is being generated. So if we generate here a a um, a panel, our data is generated in a way that each let's say like uh, layer, right? It's expressed if we if we think of this as a matrix, these are rows, right? Each layer is a row. Think of again think of this as a, as a Excel spreadsheet right these are rows so what we want to do here is the flip the matrix 
right? If we write flip, we select flip matrix. So now we want to express the same uh, data, uh, not as rows, but as columns. So what are you talking about? <laughs> Probably like you, you, you will say. So now um, I will hide the curves. Let me hide the curves. Actually, let me turn on the points. Let me hide the 3D printable shape. I guess it's like bothering us a little bit now. And this for now. Let's just work with the points. So again, all the data is organized in, in our tree as, as, as layers, as, as rows, let's say, right? As, lev at, at, as levels. So what we want to do is express this in terms of uh, columns because we, we need to get a parameter that will allow us to create a continuous spiral to 3D print this shape. So, for example, now if I create a polyline, what's happening is that our data it is expressed as columns. So you see, right now, when we flip the matrix, so if I use this directly with the other node, it will create the same curves. If I feed the, the other parameter, it will create everything as columns because uh, we want to, right? So this is what we're doing here. We want to now explode this. And now uh, we are exploding. So let me bake this for a second. Let me move this to the side. So when we bake this, what we want to get are each of the individual segments between levels, between layers. Right. That's the purpose of the baking. So after we do this, we want to get the endpoints of each curve. The endpoints, so basically per per segment, right? This is a, this is a, a, a we could do it with with data management, like getting like the first element of the of the of the list when it's organized as columns and then the second and do like a shift lift and shift list and stuff um, but in this case it's, it's easier th this way right so for each segment we're isolating the segment we're getting the start and the end point of each of these little segments over here and now we need to create a vector from these two points vector two point again you find it here vector vector and vector two point and we will create a vector from the start point to the end point and we can unitize it um, if we want it's not completely necessary but that's that's fine so then what we want to do now that we have this so uh, let me hide this information here so these are the points and what is going on here is that we need to generate we need to generate all of these vectors that you see over here, all of these lines, we're generating those because we need to generate the interpolation between between those. So I will delete this, or actually I will keep it, but I will just hide it. Uh, I will give you this file actually that that has all the comments. So then we need to again express this in terms of um, uh, of rows. Now that we have all those vectors organized as columns, we need to flip this matrix. So we will do that operation again. Flip matrix. We will get that vector data. So now our data will be organized. You see, we get the same 360 three, here. We have 10 elements. We have 360 lists with 10 elements. But now what we want to have are 10 lists, basically each for each layer that we're generating now with 360 elements that are the points basically the vectors that we just generated why because now we need to do like a very simple operation that we will do uh, that we will generate uh, here we want to generate a range of numbers right to create a smooth transition basically 360 intervals to reach the height from one layer to the other and each, basically what will happen is something like this. Let's say this is our first point in our, when I have the, the cursor right now, the first point in our list. So we need to generate 360 values to interpolate each point, like um, incrementally, right? To get all of those points closer 
like this to the next layer. So how do we do this? We need to say subtraction. Uh, uh, always like subtraction here. Operators, math operator. So we want the um, we want to connect here this 360. That is the number of points, and we want to um, subtract one value because we we will use this to to generate 360 values, right? So right now it's 359. So we will generate yeah like uh, the amount of points minus one to iterate over over our um, uh, our points. So need to generate now a range. So a range of numbers. By default, the domain is zero to one. We can just specify for the sake of um, transparency of what we're doing. Um, 0 to 1, you can write it like that, and we can connect this uh, thing. So this will generate 359 steps, so this will generate in total a range of numbers of 360 values, so you see that these values are um, going up, so basically we divide 0 to 1 in 360 uh, chunks, so those values are, in, are going up, 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 until they reach from 0 to 1. That's that's the trick, and we use that first slider we, well, because we want to keep this parametrically. If you need more resolution for for the original points, um, then what we want to do, we want to multiply each of the vectors, right, uh, to these values here. So we want to uh, multiply this value uh, by the by this. So we will do a multiplication node. We will this use as the factor and this as the factor one, factor two. So what we get here, so you see how the data is being transformed. The important thing is to keep the data with the same structure for now. So you see that now our uh, vectors are multiplied by this factor. So these vectors are, are going basically up. So how do we know this? Now if I connect this if I preview this, yeah, these vectors change the um, the the magnitude. Let's say, All right. So again, this gets like way heavier. So once we have that, what we can do right now is just move each of the points. So we want a move node that asks you for a geometry so the geometry that we want to move are the original points that we generated here and this divide curve we will move this connect this here and the motion vector for those points will be um, uh, the the vectors so you can see what is going on here so it's pretty obvious right so the original points that we have in the first level, as I told you, we start here from the bottom and incrementally because of the new values we are assigning each of the vectors to the points so they start climbing, 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 climbing until they reach the next level. You see here and then they just climb until the next level. That is nice because now because our data is organized in a, in a very nice way, we can just flatten this, right? And then we can just interpolate a curve. We can interpolate a curve. We have this option. We can generate a polyline. Um, I, I will just interpolate a, a curve through this point. So with the vertices, and let me turn this off. So you see that now we have one continuous curve. It's doing something like really funky here. Uh, that's fine. We can generate a polyline. I mean, sometimes you want to, it doesn't matter really. So if we just do a polyline instead of this curve, uh, it is doing something quite funky. Oh, it's, it's, it's correct. Sorry. It's because it's following the, the, yeah, we can generate the polyline. It's fine. 
um, or an interpolated curve. We, we have enough resolution to actually interpolate something that doesn't create like weird stuff, right? It will be it will be more continuous around the the corners now that we have hard corners, so interpolation is fine. Um, next thing to to see if this actually works and it shows the correct um, the correct data. So actually, I wanna turn this off. I can turn the turn on the three D printable shape. So now, for example, I can add more layers. Let's say fifty. Yeah, probably this will collapse because we cannot have like a flat surface if we're not doing infill, for example, right? This is the reason why I told you. But let's change actually this shape to 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 start finishing this um, uh, really short tutorial on three D printing. Let's say we want to three D print a sphere. or half a sphere. Yeah, probably that. Um, or like a bolt or something. So how do you create this? I don't remember. Yeah, like a paraboloid, for example. So paraboloid focus here, I guess. Then paraboloid direction here. Ah, oh, it was inverted, but that's fine. We can just like adapt it. Um, we can set this at the zero. Move it here and just scale it down. Uh, midpoint. Yeah. Something like this. Maybe a little bit more. Again, I will leave like the exact way of setting this to you. I don't care about the units for now. So this is an approximation just for demo purposes. So now I can say like uh, set one B rep, select this guy instead. And you see that now we have uh, it's doing something weird because of the way that this is built. Um, so let me see if we can change this uh, direction swap UV. There you go. No, it's doing something really weird here. Probably we want to change this to um, again, as I told you, this won't work with all the geometries. So, do I have an icus? You know, Is the surface created? It is created like that. Just let me do one small so we don't get that seam. Um, align to world. Yeah, and I'm just going to trim this. Let's see how this works. So, trim the printable shape, set one B-Rep. Boop. Oh, it's not working. Why? Ah, oh, because probably it's too big. Probably my sphere is too big. Yes, it's too big. Again, not despair. Um, yeah, it is too big. So now I will change this. I will put this here. I will put this here. It just goes crazy. I don't know why. I want to understand what is going on, so just give me a second. This is why, yes, I I start improvising more preview off. I just want to understand how the points are generated. Preview on. This is to increase the stuff. Uh, 
So what if I put a surface? It shouldn't affect this, but... No, it's the same result. If I reparameterize, same result. Yeah, with that polyline, uh, with the points. Just want to see the intersections that we're getting. We're getting the right intersections. It's just going crazy. We have the data correct until here. We have that okay. Um, this is okay. That is that looks okay. Here it just goes. Really crazy. Oops. Yeah. Anyway, let's just go back to our original shape. It's fine. Uh probably there's something to fix because I went to it was too fast, but that's fine. Um set one B rep, B rep. Let's go back to this. Um we can move this up a little bit. There you go. And it is doing something funky here. Oh yeah, here's doing like two intersections, so it's going a little bit crazy. Let's just do that. Actually, we can just move this to intersect like all the way. I can hide the shape. I can hide this guys as well. Yeah, so if you if you want to 3D print something like this, you get a non-planar. I mean, this is pretty clean. If you go crazy with shapes and so on and so forth, it will generate a mess. Um, so this is generating our interpolate interpolation. And one thing that you could do, for example, you can do an evaluate curve. Uh, evaluate curve. You can select your curve. And you can add a slider to go from 0 to this parameter you can use this point for example to create a line SDL that will start here it will be in vertical direction and we will give it a length of I don't know like 20 so it's a long line you can pipe this line and give it, I don't know, like 0.25 oh, sorry, I connected the wrong parameter here or whatever, just give it like a little bit of, maybe that was too low uh, 0 0.5 yeah, like enough thickness and length to simulate, for example, the, the, the nozzle of your 3D printer and then if you press control, you can smoothly like uh, actually you need to reparameterize the curve so you see you can if you press you keep control left control press and then you go you can simulate this being printed so this is like a very continuous uh, curve so you can simulate like the robotic path, the CNC path. 
Uh, and again, show invert hide. If you select the control here, you press the buttons. You can always say like, ah, oh, maybe I want to print this like this, for example, or do crazy stuff like this. Of course, you will this if if you cannot control the feed rate of your of your um, of your of your extruder here the layers will be more like separated here there will be like together so you need to I don't know you will know that here the print will be like closer maybe it, it, it won't be true to the original shape maybe like good surprises accidents will happen um, so yeah I will leave that up to you if you're doing this type of things so that's it uh, a very like clean and honest let's say approach to non-planar 3d printing so I hope you like it and see you next time thank you